You're listening to Renewing Religion, a podcast about worship, social duties, and spirituality featuring an overview of Imam al-Ghazali's Ihya. This podcast is brought to you by Seekers Hub. This Ramadan, our goal is to raise $75,000 in monthly donations to build a global Islamic seminary so that dedicated students all over the world can complete their journeys and become Islamic scholars. You can help them by becoming a monthly donor at seekershub.org slash donate. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala sayyidina wa nabiyina wa habibina Muhammad. Habibi Rabbil Alameen. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa atba'ihi ila yawmiddin. Allahumma ghfir lana in nasina wa akhtaqna ya Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, we are... Continuing in our look at renewing religion, looking at the at an overview of the Ihya of Imam Al Ghazali, Rahimahullah Taala, and today we've reached the section on fasting, and fasting. Of course, this is what we're engaged in right now but we're going to look at some of the spiritual dimensions of fasting and Imam al-Ghazali in his Ihya covers both the religious guidance related to fasting and how one fasts and the sunnas of fasting and then he looks at some of the spiritual dimensions of fasting and this method of Imam al-Ghazali was followed by many other scholars before him and after him, right? connecting the outward duties laid out by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and detailed by the Prophet ﷺ with some of their inward meanings so that we can act with purpose, act with intent and act with understanding of why we are doing what we are doing. So the fast has many subtle meanings and we're going to look here at a presentation of the mysteries of fasting by one of the great late scholars Ibn Ajiba who beautifully summarizes many of the meanings related to fasting and he does this in his tafsir of Surah Al-Fatiha. Why? Because when we say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدْ It is you alone we worship. Then this meaning, it is you alone we worship, applies to worship in general, but applies to every single type of worship. And the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we engage in is through the, the devotional ritual acts of worship. And it also applies to every act that we do in life in a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to understand إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ and it, you alone do we submit to, we need to know all the sharia. Because the sharia, divine guidance tells us how to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it says إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ it is you alone we worship, right? and this and this placing of the, the the divine name before the worship, it is you alone we worship. This highlights the meaning of sincerity, of complete focus upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of being completely directed in our prayer, in our fast, and in every act of worship. It is you alone we worship. And there's an approach to the worship with it, which is, وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ It is you alone that we depend upon. That when we approach the fast, we don't depend on our strength and our ability to be able to fast. We depend upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is here that Ibn Ajiba, who has a tafsir of the Fatiha, that in one edition 
is in 700 pages. It's called Tafsir al-Fatiha al-Kabir, the larger Tafsir of Surah al-Fatiha. He, he looks at the, the spiritual dimensions of all the acts of worship. The spiritual dimensions of all the acts of worship. Amongst them is the, is the fast. So some of the spiritual dimensions of fasting are that are that fasting weakens our mere humanness, right? our basharia. Right? It weakens our connection with the merely material world. And it is a, an established reality that excessive eating and drinking makes heavy our attachment to the, to the material world, to alamul hiss. And to the extent that the material world is more palpable and real to us, the more the subtle reality of our spiritual consciousness is veiled from us because the reality is spiritual right what is real is that can allah wala shay'a that allah was and there is nothing besides him and that reality remains just as true right now that allah is Nothing else is of itself. Everything else, its reality is perishing, dependent, fleeting. How does this table exist? The table seems really real. Hit your head against it and you'll know. But it's not. The reality is that it is dependent. It is fleeting. But it is our attachment to our, to our worldly living that makes the material seem real and the spiritual seem fleeting. And fasting weakens the most direct point of connection that we have to the material, which is food and drink and the fulfillment of pleasures. And this is a general rule, that to the extent that you increase in the material, will you diminish the spiritual, generally. Right? Or to, to the extent that you increase your attachment to the material, right? will you diminish your attachment to the spiritual. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah has, no, has not placed two hearts in anyone's chest and the heart has only one direction in which it can face so this is one of the benefits of fasting another of the benefits of fasting is that it is our upholding the divine quality of a, a samadiya of Allah being a samad the one free of all need, right? the one free of all need. We characterize ourselves by that, by recognizing our inherent neediness. Right? And fasting makes us realize this reality, that Allah who summit, Allah alone is free of all need. Right? And we, we are necessarily dependent on, the, on these material needs. But it reminds us of our dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Right? And these are meanings that we should 
embrace that we should fasting should make us reflect on the divine name as samad the independent whom all are dependent upon right and this is why ibn atha says wurudul faqat a'yadul muridin the coming of times of impoverishment of neediness are the festival seasons for those seeking Allah because it is when you realize your neediness your weakness do you, does your heart open to recognizing the one who is free of all need worthy of all praise the third of the benefits of fasting is it purifies the heart it gives a, a purity to the heart by diminishing one's eating and drinking during the day it gives one a a clarity of spiritual reflection and it can actually be good for one in terms of clearer thinking as well though that depends if one has become accustomed to fasting so those who are not accustomed to fasting the first week or so of fasting they're just trying to survive Right, but that's one of the reasons why it's a, it's a sunnah to try to fast outside the month of Ramadan so that you are able to, to immediately benefit from the benefits of fasting. It also, it not just purifies, helps with purity of heart, it softens the heart as well. Right? And these are related because in that, weak, in that realization of your weakness, it softens the heart. So you don't feel as self-sufficient, as self-confident, etc. Right? You, you feel that neediness to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that weakness. So it is a good opportunity, that softness of heart, that sense of weakness, it's a good opportunity to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereby. So related to that is that it fasting facilitates fe this feeling lowly and humbled right and to and facilitates ridding oneself of the the qualities of arrogance and haughtiness etc it can facilitate that but it's something that one seeks that you realize you're not all that you're you're you're, you're weak right you're you're weak and you we embrace that in realigning our character And the, the, the masters of the spiritual path said that the, the lower self is not broken and humbled by anything as it is by hunger. Because then it realizes who's in charge. Um, and... of the benefits of fasting as well is that it breaks one's desire for, for sin and it diminishes the control of one's lower self over one right because the origin of all sin is desire the origin of all sin is strength of desire that cannot be restrained so fasting teaches one how to have restraint and it facilitates in itself other restraint so fasting restrains one from certain desires but it directly facilitates restraining from other sins but it teaches one it gives one a toolkit how to withhold from other desires that if someone is addicted or has made a bad habit of particular sins you apply the principles of fasting to that particular sin. You, know, you can fast from backbiting the whole day. And if you backbite, you consider that you've broken your quote-unquote fast. Right? And you hold yourself to that. Right? Um, the fasting, because of this weakening 
of our material concerns, one finds a natural inclination towards the spiritual, towards acts of worship and devotion. Right? But this is a quality that one needs to nurture, right? that one should try to nurture a stillness in Ramadan. That, okay, you're not eating and drinking, you have a lunch break, don't just spend the lunch break surfing the internet, saying, oh, well, I'm, I, you know, I'm tracking this auction on, someone was telling me, do you know how to, totally random question, I don't know why I was at, um, do you know how to cancel an auction on eBay? <laughs> so answer big question, not tech question. I didn't say that. I said, why? I said, because they bid on something that they weren't sure they wanted. So why were you, why do you bid on it? Because on their lunch break, they didn't know what to do, because they didn't want to go in for lunch, so they're just browsing different things on eBay. Okay. One of the, fasting should teach us to have a, a degree of stillness. Don't busy yourself with the material. Right? And that's the beginning of finding the inclination towards the spiritual. Right? that the default inclination should be towards the spiritual rather than the material. But that is only facilitated when fasting, for example, by embracing that stillness that fasting facilitates, that you are holding back from, from many things, even practically from a time management perspective, you have more time. But don't fill it with the unnecessary. If someone else, I don't know why I get these things, told me, you know, it's so cool. I was able to watch, I don't know how, they mentioned a shockingly large number of episodes of some show that came out. Said because there's so much, so many things you, can, you don't need to do each day in Ramadan. I said, did you do your taraweeh? He said, no. Hmm. Okay, so what, what else is new? Okay. Then you, have that, you don't have to do breakfast. You don't have to do lunch. Right? You can't take a coffee break. You have all this extra time. If you can't fill it with good things, at least just don't fill it. Just try to stay still. And then make a deliberate choice towards the spiritual rather than the material. Okay? And this is one of the benefits of fasting. And you should make that a habit and learn the habit that fill the discretionary spaces in your time with the spiritual rather than the material. This is why one of the benefits, one of the great spiritual benefits of fasting, they say, is contemplation. Practically. That if you don't find yourself directed towards the, 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 the spiritual acts of devotion, turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, etc., then pause and reflect. That's why Ibn Atayullah says, Al-fikratu siraju al-qalb. Fa'idha fuqidat, fala idha'ata lah. Reflection, contemplation is the illuminating lamp of hearts. If absent, the heart has no light. Okay. So, this is a very important opportunity in Ramadan. Okay. Just pause and think. But think about what lasts, not the perishing. One of my, one of my teachers, he asked his teacher for advice in seeking knowledge. And he wrote this really memorable advice. It begins, it says, embrace the way of Sayyidina Ibrahim, who said, لا أحب الآفلين. I love not the perishing. I don't love the perishing. From the benefits of fasting is also health. And one fasts for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but one of the things that one 
seeks the pleasure of Allah through in one's fast is for the fast to help us realign our health. Right? I mean, it's come in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sumu Tasihu. Right? Fast and you will acquire good health. Right? Fast and you will acquire good health. Right? This is, of course, if you fast in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet Right? That you fast, but at the end of the day, you know, the, the net eating in your fast should be less, both in quantity and qualitatively. If Ramadan is the month of feasting, then you missed out on the point of the fasting. And not just in terms of the quantity of the fast, but the quality. If Ramadan is when every culinary desire is realized, and of course there's a balance, right? That you enjoy the month, you facilitate it, etc. But this is not this is not party time. Fasting also nurtures a practical quality, which is to realize that you don't need much of this dunya. Khiffatul mu'na. Right? That you don't need to be that concerned about eating. You can survive with very little. You wake up in the day, what first concern is what's for breakfast. You don't have to think about it. Then a lot of people, they just stumble. Like their day is basically, what's breakfast? When you're done, then when's the coffee break? Then when's lunch? Then where is the, you know, where's the tea before returning to work? Or the coffee for the commute back? And then when's dinner? And then there's when's the, you know, when's the snack at night? So there's just, you stumble from one food to the other. Right? And you realize actually you don't need that much to survive. And that's why one of the things we've tried to encourage this year here at, at the hub is, with the potluck iftar is you know there's a certain degree of simplicity in the in in the food right um, brilliant kale notwithstanding of course um, of the benefits of fasting as well is that it's a shield from the shaitan and if you see on seekers hub we have actually a few answers on what does it mean that the shaitan is chained right the stronger opinion is that it's not necessarily all the devils and it's not necessarily completely because a chain right, slows you down. Right? It, does, it doesn't mean that shaitan is locked up and chained away. Right? Yeah, it, the shaitan is chained down means the sh- sh- shaitan is slowed down. But, yeah, but, but it, most of scholars say he's still out there. Right? And most of our lives would bear witness to some of that. Um, so... The, these are some of the benefits of fasting. We, we should approach the fasting with this realization, right? That ultimately, fasting is training us to restrain, not just from food and drink, but then from all the things that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then from restraining from the things that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we restrain from the things that distract us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are the three levels of restraint. And the basic fast is restraining from the things that invalidate the fast. Then we restrain from all the things that are sinful. And you can put another category from all the things that are disliked. Then we, then we strive to restrain from all that distracts us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the state that is sought from the believer is a state described of the foremost of the believers in the verses of light from Surah An-Nur. رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْعٌ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ Accomplished ones whom neither trade nor transaction busy away from the remembrance of Allah. Meaning that they are busy in their trade and transaction and their worldly affairs, but their hearts remain busy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why one of the righteous uh, used to say, 
that al mu'min yahmilu zawiyatahu ala katifi that the believer bears their monastery on their back right? that w w you know, wherever the believer is they're in a state of seclusion with their lord right? right and that's what some of the indian ulama refer to this as al khalwa fil jalwa right to be in a state of seclusion to be alone when you know, when while surrounded by people right? that is what is sought that the, the believer in person is with people but with their heart they're with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but that requires training and and the month of Ramadan is a training ground for how to busy one's heart with Allah while being busied with our outward worldly concerns so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us that that kind of reality to make to make our focus in this month upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to make the most of the many opportunities that fasting provides we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahumma ya hayyu ya qayyum bi rahmatika nastaghith aslih lana sha'nana kullah wa la takilna ila anfusina wa la ila ahadin min khalqika tarfat a'ayn wa la aqalla min dhalika ya ni'mal mujib ya man bi yadihi maqalid as-samawati wal ard اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم والله we ask you that you have mercy upon the ummah for your beloved messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم we ask you Allah that you dispel from them every distress and hardship and oppression يا رب العالمين we ask you that you grant the ummah for your beloved messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم victory over their enemies um, from within themselves and externally, Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you that you return us and the Ummah of your beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the light and mercy and beauty and excellence of the way of your beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask you, O Allah, that you make us ambassadors of light, ambassadors of mercy, ambassadors of excellence, and ambassadors of the beautiful way of your beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whom you have described as a Sirajul Munir the light-giving lamp, the one by whose mention every darkness is dispelled and whose light, if present in any house, is not in need of any other light. We ask you that you illuminate our hearts and our minds and our lives and our households and our families and our communities um, by that light, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and that we be ambassadors of that light to all creation, Allahumma zayyinna bi zinat al-iman wa jalna hudat al-muhtadin bi rahmatika ya arham al-rahimin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina wa Nabiina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa ummatihi ila yawm al-din wa akhir da'ana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Thank you for listening to this Seekers Hub podcast. To listen to the rest of our shows, please visit seekershub.fm. You can also subscribe to our weekly email newsletter called Compass where we'll send the best of Seekers Hub's content straight to your inbox every single week. To get on the list, visit seekershub.org slash compass.